Okay, welcome to the man cave. Part two of getting ready for Baja. So last time I did a video on untweaking my radiator. And uh, so I got from their name different, but I believe these are KTM twins. Right here. So let's unpack that and see what it looks like. Box all wrapped up here. Good Deacon. Still a lot of wind noise. And one thing I got, I carry this leather one, Leatherman with me, and I'm kind of wondering, you know, they, you're not supposed to bring knives into Mexico. Um, so I'm wondering if it's okay if I do that. Definitely not guns. So this is a genuine KTM power part. Information. All right, so it's that part number. Seven six five three five nine four forty thousand. Hmm. Well, I can see a, a lot of need for us from a survival standpoint where I need my leatherman. So I may risk do it. If the guy says, "Do I have any knives?" I said, "Yes, sir." It's in my toolkit. The, the knife around my bladder, right? That'd be stupid. Okay. So brackets. Let's see. What we got. We got this. If um, looks like it's going to be a crossbar. Uh, so KTM 690s have a um, a one-piece radiator, unlike the the Enduros. So it's got this stack of hardware. Uh, another bracket here. This bracket. Stuff with my parts and this bracket. So it's unloaded all. There's a, a another guard I really like out of South Africa, uh, Rost R O S T engineering um, the shipping to get it here costs more than the part but I really like it I'd like to get that especially if I run into any more radiator problems the radiator on a 690 cost $753 dollars um, and I just don't know if it needs to be that expensive But there's an aftermarket part waiting for somebody to uh, come up with. But, you know, the volume is so low, you can never make any money. Um, the only way it's going to make the parts cheaper is if KTM sells more 690s and they increase their volume. So this is all, looks like it's made out of... Uh, uh, three millimeter steel the whole thing and let's get this part out I mean the parts look simple I guess we'll find out once we uh, start taking it apart there Deacon you've done really good Here's this guy to new his new goggles. Here, sit up. 
Here, sit. So, by the way, I got to put in a sales pitch for these guys. Uh, these are called Rexpex. Uh, they're made out of Wyoming, or at least that's who's doing it. Vended on the top, getting some air in there. Vented on the sides. You see the little air holes in there. And Deacon can actually see out of this thing. So I'm going to give him a break because he's been really good. Um, there you go, Deacon. Just seeing if it's um, sweaty or anything in there. A little bit. Poor baby. You're going to have to wear those. We got a long amount of time. Yeah. Let's see. Are you wet? No. Let's see if there's any sweat in there. Okay. Slight diversion. So, he's a happy camper now. He's out in the wind. Still rubbing himself. So, I'll have to make sure that I. Um, especially on pavement, uh, I may go to the. What? Well, on pavement, we're going faster, and the problem with the other types of goggles he had was the. Uh, as we got going faster, the wind would push push it up over his nose, and then the part of the goggle would be right across his eyes. So the hardest part of this job is unwrapping them. How come they couldn't do this in orange? They're going to powder coat it anyway. All KTM guys like lots of orange parts. Kind of windy today, so all my trash is blown away. We're gonna have to do some cleanup. There we go. All right, so we've got all the parts sitting right there. One, two, three, four, five, and hungry. So let's look at this. Here's the directions, and so the, I guess the first thing they show us the instructions um, and what to take off, and this particular side is in German. Now I'm getting to the English part. Remove the seat, remove the left and right spoilers, remove the plastic radiator shields, eight on the right and left. Huh, I wonder if they're gonna stay or... I suspect. Then we get to remove the radiator cap. We're gonna... Looks like we're gonna pull the, the brackets that mount it. And start assembling them. So, based upon that, let me go get myself, um, say, what do I need? I'm going to need uh, the wrench for the shrouds. I'm going to have to pull the seat. And the uh, first thing I'll do is just get rid of my, the stuff I put on for Deacon. Right, so, the tank bag goes right around there. I've got a new tank bag coming in, so this tank bag is going to get relegated to my KTM 500 or the 300.
put that there. Pull the seat. The seat you get at by this little lever right here. Supposedly. at how to connect up the battery to some sort of device to carry my phone with me. So I'm going to go get some tools and I'll be right back. Here. Um, I got myself my little scooter to sit around on and I'll commence to take the shrouds off. So couple extra tools. I'll have to make it. whatever I do. I can uh, fix it. Oh yeah, there's another thing on the radiator that we'll look at. Okay. Okay, your hardware is here. shrouds or the plastic guys what's involved there oh there's a screw Duh. since we're on this side we have to pop that screw out. This is a, I'm using an eight millimeter socket. shoulder tool. Let's remember what that looks like. It's so that part's coming off. And I'm not too sure what's holding it on. Oh, it's just going to pop off on that. So let's wheel our way over this side. The driveway is not conducing to wheeling our way. some Baja stickers. I hope somebody sells Baja stickers. You know, go by Mike Sky Ranch, go by Coco's. I survived the Baja Great Gas Gap. That screw off right here.
diesel in, and that lifts up, and this part falls away from the fender. I'm not too sure yet if we're keeping this, but we'll find out. I would think we'd have to have some sort of bash protection on there from rocks. So, all right, where's those directions? The next thing it said, let's go ahead and take all this over here. Hopefully it won't all blow away on me. Okay. Okay, remove the seat, left and right spoilers, remove the plastic radiator shields on the right and left. Huh. Their shield looks different than my shields, but maybe that's... There. Then remove the screw. That one there, that's number nine. Open the radiator cap, number ten. And warning, cooling can be very hot and under pressure when the motorcycle is in operation. Do not put the radiator, radiator hose, or other cutting. Cooling system components when the engine is warm, let the engine cooling system cool down first. The event is called immediately flush affected air with blue car motors. Okay, you've had your warning. Then, let's do that. Um, I think just to get myself room for the screw, I'm going to pull the radiator cap off first. And it did squish out, but it's been cold. Uh, but it has the oil coolant reservoir right there. Unlike the Enduro models, that's nice and full. And let's see. Now I gotta pull this guy off. One handed. the wife <laughs> all right all right let's see now, this guy's a little bent by the way um, Ron has said that some people have noticed that this Tinnerman clip it's that little sharp thing if this thing bends in, it could poke inside your radiator and punch a hole because this part's aluminum. And uh, so I'm surprised I'm that this is bent that direction, but maybe I needed to do that to make everything fit. Anyway, let's keep going. This one's got a big hole in the top. All right, so that must be for the radiator cap. So this would go just like that. And it says now, using the original screw, that's this guy. And there's a little rubber baby buggy bumper. That, that, this, that this has to go into. So that's the first step. the radio cap back on. Hmm, I could use a little bit more rubber hose. But you can see there's the coolant tank. 
So, I wonder if it's supposed to, if they want the, this to still go this way or if they want the hose to go over the top it now. Because, let's see if I can make it fit. Disconnect the hose. Okay, so then I'm going to put the radiator cap on. cap is on it's got this little pivoting part but this is not I'm going to have to go I guess over the top let's see how that works oops whatever was in the hose get out my new camera all right, so I would have to say that um, we're going to have to run this and then maybe tie it down. Okay, so we'll put it on. Let me get my handy dandy KTM pliers. Never been used before. And that should make it easier. You know, my GoPro comes with a chest strap. I could try putting that on. So. Okay, that's on there like that. Oops. So I believe that we will, when I get done with this, we'll just go ahead and put a, a tie wrap right through there to hold that in place. And I think that would be the ex most excellent thing to do. Well, see, it needs to be a little bit lower, doesn't it? What were they thinking? I think it needs a longer tube. It should come with a, I would say a one inch, 25 millimeter longer piece of rubber hose then you can run it underneath through here but they didn't give us that option so we'll take a look at that yeah done I think you can, yeah with that tied there the the pork's not going to get in the way all right back to the instructions you know <clears throat> Our instructions blew away. Deacon, fetch! Otherwise, I'm gonna have to learn English and Italian really fast. Now, remove the nut 13, remove the screws 11 and 12. 
So that's on this bracket here. interesting why was that loose did I forget to tighten that back when I, I think maybe I ought to put some Loctite on that too see that All right. remove the nut 13 which is on the back of the horn It's uh, an 8 millimeter wrench. <clears throat> but anyway, let's uh, mount the holder 15 of the original screw, root the cables properly. So let's get this bracket put on first. That's uh, this guy. I think because it's showing yeah so this one is going to go here like that so let's find that too that's this one here I think I'll follow up with uh, some Loctite. Okay, mount the holder with original screw. You know, first thing you know, see I got this gap sitting here. And if this was to go forward, then this little holy thing that crashes and it's in the way. So So we'll see what happens here. Let me turn it over an overview. Position a connecting tube and mount on the left and right using collar screws. M26. Oh, I see. Got a uh, little spacer. Okay, so there's uh, this guy. It's going to go in between. Like that. All right, now things are starting to make more sense. So, so let me scooch around to the other side. And see what's going on over there. So I guess we lose these brackets, which is really kind of a shame because I just bought a pair of these things because I bent this radiator. So, Give that to whatever friends need it. All right, come on, guys. So, next step. Now we're over here. Let's pull this guy off. The ambassador. The screw that I pulled out of here. And, um,. I'm going to add some Loctite to it. Oop. And then um, I'm very generous with the Loctite. And I'm going to mount that there. Pull this mount off. And then 
this bracket goes here. In Loctite. I don't know if I. Do you remember if I Loctited the other side? It's going to say to position the connecting tube and mount on the left and right using collar screws that were supplied in this little bag. So this is the part they're talking about. And somewhere or another I think it's got to go inwards like this. Excellent. So, okay, so these are saying use the 25 millimeter ones. The, um, there's also four 20 uh, millimeter in the bag. Is that what they are? 20 and 25. Okay, so. Obviously, then 25 is longer than uh, 20, wouldn't you think? So let's at least get one of these things in place. Just to get it started. Yeah, that uh, looks like the right screw. Let me sneak over there and find out why that's not laying right away. Let's make sure these are all the same length. Yep. Okay, so I am using the So far that seems to be pretty straightforward. See it in there. How it all lines up.
I wonder how hard these screws would be to drill so I could safety wire them. Now that little cross brace is just a hollow tube, so I'm concerned if I tighten it too much, then uh, I'll uh, compress the heck out of it. So our, uh, now this little guy is bent back a little bit, but you see it did scrape there and I'm, um, one guy said just get rid of this altogether and just use a tie strap to hold them on. And that way you don't have to worry about this, this bolt rotating and puncturing the, um, the radiator. So it'd be interesting to go on the forum and see what all they think. So I'm going to go ahead and, since I'm over here, I'm going to go ahead and put Loctite on that up here. I'll need to, if I did, and torque it. Put a longer screw on that. As usual, I have a this little kit you get from Enduro Engineering. Track box. And in it they have screws that you'll want. So it's like I'm taking a 20 millimeter long one. I don't think there was enough threads left on this guy to do the same on the other side. having a little bit longer screw on there that gives me a little bit better warm feelings so let's find another one of those that guy right there
And I didn't tighten it down yet, but I'll feel better with a longer screw in it. So it has more threads. Well, I didn't think at first that this um, that this uh, bracket would do anything, but you know what's really interesting is that like this little part here that got bent when I fell down it's I don't think it's going to get used at all so um, let's grab these pliers so I don't think this one's going to get used either so what's the deal or maybe Oh, maybe it is. Maybe I'm supposed to put those these guys on top of that. Really? Okay, well. Did they say to do that? Yeah, it looks like it's on top of the existing one. All right, rewind. So these brackets, let me pull this guy back out. Definitely needs a longer screw now. Maybe that's why I've got the, the screws that they gave me. Oh, man. I mean, the instructions just are not very good. I mean, as far as the pictures. But when you start playing with it, you say, well, that starts making sense. But... There's little spacers. Okay, so came with spacers. So let's take one of their screws instead of the ones I had. Um, put that on there. Interesting. Get that started, and then we take one of these little guys. Not too sure what space are. Let me go find the directions a little way again. Um, actually two diameter spacers right so the question is there's going to be a spacer for here then there's going to be a spacer that's needed up here for the radiator so I'm going to bet the fat one's going to be used for the radiator so I'm going to go
So see what I'm doing? There's a little that spacer there. And then this guy goes in there the rest of the way. And it's supposed to be tightened down to all right, so that's now supporting the radiator. Always a good thing. So, let's go back to this side where I said, looks like we don't need those anymore, when in fact we do. So, grab this guy. Okay, we're on a roll. So, if you wanna bring your bike over to our house, can uh, pull this guy off again. Remember we just got done putting a longer screw in there. Well that makes sense. We got to give the, bot the radiator, bottom of the radiator some support. So you're using existing mounts plus, plus, which is really cool, the um, exist this reinforced bracket and and this one doesn't need the spacer which is kind of weird. I don't know man you freaking me out I can see if I can fit that in there. You know, because my radiator was bent once, I'm a little leery about um, what it's supposed to be. So, but let's try it. Let's go with the long one. Put the spacer in here. Let's try that. I'm holding it between my knees. It's a flexible mount, so. one down and tighten that one down I think the amount succumbs to it see that it kind of moves around So at this point, the um, um, these would be the hardware parts all connected. So now we got to put this part back on. And it, it uses the same going to fit into these little mounts on the bottom here. So let's see if I can, what's the best way to do this? Go in this way. Go in through the fender. Yeah.
Okay, so those little tits go in the, those holes as before. There's a little bit of flexing going on with this. All right, now something's got to happen up here. And that's where this big, the big diameter spacers come in. So right here, you see that's got to go in there, right through there. It's a 20 millimeter long screw. That makes sense. Yeah, so it needs that spacer to grab onto that little flat that's on the radiator shroud. Okay, let's uh, go to the other side. Let's see if I can make that happen too. side too. I don't like having my washer on there. Okay then. So I believe this part's done. Let's double check this half. Again. Yep, it's tight. Okay, now we get to put the shrouds on. Here's the part. See here? Uh, where's your other shroud? It was on a rubber bumper. This one isn't. I don't think this one had it. I wonder if I'm supposed to have one. So there's one here. It really needs one there. Of 
All right, well, anyway, I don't like this. I've got this big gap. If I had a rubber bumper here, that would solve that problem. I could bang this a little bit, bend it in. That'll bring it closer, but it doesn't solve the problem. And the guys who did assemble my 690 out in Festus, Missouri, did an absolutely horrid job. I don't think they ever saw one before. All right, so that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. There's Deacon. Say woof. <laughs>